What's up YouTube? It's James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I wanna to tell you all about JavaScript objects. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and let's first just talk about uh, what JavaScript objects are. And in JavaScript, objects are basically key value pair representations of something. So key value pairs, let's see an example of what this would look like. We could have a person, or excuse me, let's say this is a person object. So first name could, or name could be James Quick. Then we could have maybe email is James at learnbuildteach.com. Then maybe age is five, something like that. Not five, let's say 28, I think is what I am. So JavaScript objects are key value pairs. So you've got this key name here and it points to a value, which in this case is James Q Quick. You can also have a key of email and then that'll point to uh, the email address over here. And then a key of age will point to uh, 28 in this case. So what this is, is in other languages, in Python, for example, you have dictionaries. In Java, you have uh, maps and hash maps. This is a pretty consistent idea across languages. Sometimes they're called different things but key value pairs are what JavaScript objects are. So let's go ahead and uh, just start creating one of these. Let's do a const person is an empty object. So this is how you define an empty object. This is how you create a new empty object. Now you could also create an object with stuff already in it. So if I wanted to say person equals, um, I could open up those brackets and go ahead and put the key value pairs in there. So just like before, uh, we could say first is James, uh, not second, but last is quick. Age is, I don't know why I keep giving myself made up ages. Uh, <laughs> email is james at learnbuildteach.com and so on and so on. So this is going ahead and actually initializing an object and then putting several key value pairs in there. Again, the key here is first, value is James, key is last, value is quick, age 28, email james at learnbuildteach.com and so on. So this syntax for creating an object is called a, uh, an object literal syntax to be able to create it. And saying I can't create this thing twice when I try to run this thing. So that makes a lot of sense. I'm just gonna comment that one out for now. All right, so we've got an object created. Now, how do we work with the properties? Well, to get the first property of the person, and actually VS Code gives me some intelligence here, I could just do person.first. And just to prove this, let's log it out. So console.log person.first and run this, and we should see James when it reruns. And then we could copy and paste this again and do last and this should say James quick. And if we go again and do email, we should see the email pop out as well. So this is called the dot notation. This is where you use the dot and then the name of the property to get that actual property, get the value associated with that property, get the value associated with that key. You can also do the same thing. Uh, I don't actually know what this is called, named notation maybe. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure the formal name for it. But instead of doing the dot, we can do brackets and then we'll type in the key that we're looking for the value of. So in this case, we're looking for the value that's associated with that key name. And I can copy this again and again and get uh, last and email as well. So now if you look, I do the first one. Oh, this is not name, this should be first. So if you try to get the value for a key that doesn't exist, you'll get undefined as shown down here. But now when I run, we should see all that information being printed out again. So to access properties of your object, you can either do the dot notation or you can do, I'll call it name notation. I don't actually know what the formal word for that is. And one thing I forgot to mention that you may have picked up on, notice that uh, the data inside of person, the values, they can be any type of data. So we've got three strings, James, Quick, and uh, the email address. Age is a number, so that you can put any type of thing inside of your object and be perfectly fine just with JavaScript being such a dynamic language. So I do wanna show one more thing. If you want to access a property, that you uh, you don't want to hard code the name, but you actually have that in a variable. So if I called 
uh, key name equals uh, first. I could actually use this to pass in to person. So I could pass in key name. This is a variable, but that variable is the string first. It'll do the exact same thing as just typing in first immediately. So sometimes you wanna be a little dynamic in figuring out which property you're looking for. That thing, that key might be in a variable and you can use that variable to go ahead and get that property. All right, uh, so with, with these, uh, working with properties of your object, you can also update them. So if I then took my person and said James equal, or name, wow, sorry, equals Jessica, and then console log person dot name again. Now we should see Jessica down here. So that's how you would update it. Same thing with age, person dot age equals, uh, she's 28 too, but she'll be 29 in a little bit. And then let's log out just to show the change. Console.log person.age. Okay, so there's 29, so that's changed from 28. You can also delete properties. So with, um, let's say, let's say Jess was sensitive about her age and we wanted to delete that property. We could call delete, delete person.age. And now if I try to log out person.age, you won't see that there. And we can also log out the entire object of person and just be able to see that that's not there. So the updated print shows you that there's no age property. And then when I tried to uh, get the property age from the person, it came out as undefined because that key doesn't exist, which then means the value doesn't exist. So let's do, uh, let's talk about uh, looping, let's talk about looping through and maybe printing out all the key value pairs. JavaScript actually does that for you if you do a console log of, uh, of the object, but we can uh, do it ourselves. So the way we can do that is iterate through all of the keys here on the left side, iterate through all the keys, and then we can print out the associated values. So to iterate through uh, each of the keys, you can do a for in loop. So for let key in person, Let's just log out the keys here. So this is gonna print out down here all the keys, right? The first, last, email, and name. So we could do something like string concatenation to then say, all right, print out all the keys and then I dynamically use that key to print out all the values. So we should see first, James, last, quick. And this looks, again, a lot like what JavaScript goes ahead and prints out for us, but it's useful for us to know how to do this. We can also, just a, a little side note, we could change this to a, an ES6 template literal string by using the backticks. And so we can reference our variables directly in there. And that will help format, although it might be a little confusing, help format that string a little bit and see that it still prints out the same value. So that's just a little, little JavaScript string fun there with the uh, ES6 template literals. Another way that you could iterate through, I think this is the, this is the better way here for uh, let key in, in, in person in this case. You could also say const keys equals object dot keys of the person. This will go ahead and get, I, it's not quite an array I don't think, but it's, it's similar to an array. So we can log out console log keys, not key, but keys. And notice it's gonna print out basically an array of the keys in that object. So you could, you could then use those to do something if you needed to. All right, let's talk about equality. Let's say const person one equals, and we'll just do name is James. And then let's copy the same thing and call this one person two. So to us, to the reader, to the user, uh, not the computer, these look like the same object, but let's try to see if person one equals, double equals or triple equals, won't get too into that right now. Um, that's a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit separate of a discussion for JavaScript, but let's just print out, uh, is person one equal to person two? You might expect that this would be true, but it actually comes out to be false. And the reason is, even though these things look the same, they have the same data, JavaScript with objects is not comparing the data inside of the object. It's actually comparing the, the, the reference to uh, what this variable references. So this variable basically points to an object somewhere in memory. It's just got a pointer. Uh, person two has a different, actually points to a different 
thing. So these are two completely separate objects. And because of that, when you check to see if they're equal, they are not. But we could do something like this. And this gets a little bit interesting. We could say person one equals person two. And in this case, that is true, not because they have the same values, but because they point to the same, they have the same reference to the same object. But this is not maybe what you intended, depending on what you're doing. Uh, we, if we wanted to change person to dot name equals Bob, and then let's print out person to or person one dot name as well as person to dot name. This is a good example because after changing person to dot name, notice that both person one and person two dot name have changed and person one and person two are equal because they both basically reference the same object in memory. This is a little bit tricky, but just know if you're trying to make a copy of an object, you might have a little bit of, um, you might have some unknown things going on. So make sure that you understand um, how objects are referenced and then what it means for equality. And then now we can actually talk about a, a good way to make a copy of an object and have them be completely different things. So with ES6, uh, mod more modern JavaScript, there was lots of changes with objects, lots of changes in general. One of the changes is, let's create a person three and say name is James. And we saw before, if we did const person four equals person three, that's not really making a copy because it's if we change person three, it would change person four. So they've got something called the spread operator in, um, in ES6. So this is the ability to basically initialize an object and the spread operator says for each key value in person three, go ahead and make a copy of that thing and then put it into person four. So this will actually create a copy of person three into person four. And if we look at if they equal each other, previously when we just did the assignment like this, they would have been equal. Now, person three should not be Let's see, person three should not be equal to person four because we're using the spread operator. So you'll see that a lot in modern JavaScript. This is something definitely to, one, ES6 JavaScript is definitely gonna be worth your while to look into and make sure you understand. And then also, uh, there's some really great free features in here for you to take advantage of, like making a copy of an object with, uh, with the spread operator. And the one, one more thing I wanna talk about is uh, destructuring. So let's say we have person five equals and we'll do first and last is quick. All right, so let's say I wanted to just get the last name out of that property. Well, I could do uh, const last equals person five dot last. I could do that. But there's a shorter syntax in, um, in modern JavaScript, in ES6 JavaScript, where I could do destructuring and say from from whatever object I'm going to be referencing, I want to get the, the first property and put it into a variable and get it from person five. So what this is saying is person five is an object. I want to create variables for, let's say first and last from that object. So it's gonna get the first property and the last property and then assign them to their own variables here. And then I could console log first and last and you see James Quick is being printed out correctly. So this object destructuring is actually really, uh, really cool as well. It's used a lot, especially in modern JavaScript. You definitely wanna take a look into that, make sure that you understand that too. One last thing I forgot to mention, if we come back up to, actually we can stay here with person five. We talked about the key value pairs can be anything. These can also be functions. So if we wanted a function called print name, we could actually define that function right there and we could say console, dot log this dot first and this dot last. So now I could come in and I could just call person, what am I on five dot print name. And that should print out James quick again. So notice in this case, the this, this is, this can be a little bit more complicated, but in this case, this is referencing basically the object, which obviously has the properties of first and last. So you can print those out. So just wanted to kind of call out that inside of your, uh, inside of your objects, you can have keys that point to functions as well as just regular kind of data types. Last thing I want to show you is talk just for a second about JavaScript object notation or JSON. 
This is super, super common in terms of trying to get information from a website. Most of the time they respond with JSON and it's just a way to structure data. And it's very, very similar to JavaScript objects, which is, called, which is why it's called JavaScript object notation or JSON. So in this case, this is an array of objects of just kind of dummy data that I got. And you can notice in here, this right here looks pretty much like what we just worked with, except for the keys in this case are surrounded with quotes. So the keys in JSON have to be surrounded by quotes, but everything else is basically the same where you have your key value pair and then you define your object with your brackets. So JSON is something that you'll see a ton with requesting information, maybe from a web API. Uh, and this is how they format it when they respond, to, when they respond back to you. One last thing I want to, I'm actually on the last thing now, I promise. Uh, if I wanted to create a, let's say const, uh, first, oh, actually we already have our first. So we have a first variable here. Let's say we wanted to, uh, create a person six and we wanted to give it the value or the key value of first and then the, the variable first that we have referenced up here. If these two things are the same, if the key and the value are the same, we could just type in first once and it will go ahead and take care of that for us. Let's print out person six and we should see uh, it, it already has that key value pair. So if, if the key and the value are gonna be spelled the same, you can just, uh, just use it once and it'll go ahead and take care of uh, putting in the key and the value for you. So that's gonna wrap it up for JavaScript objects. There's tons of new information with uh, ES6 and future versions of JavaScript. Lots of new functionality. Definitely recommend diving in and getting comfortable with that. Objects in JavaScript are one of the most common things that you'll work with. So you definitely wanna be com comfortable with JavaScript objects. So that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.